Hi friends, uh, this is Rakesh and today we are going to analyze a continuous beam right, continuous beam carrying any uh, uniformly varying load right, so uniformly varying load and two of the other transverse loads and uh, for that uh, what we will do is go for the preference, go for structure say so, ok, now uh, what we will see is the problem so a two span continuous beam with an overhang on one side is, is shown in the figure. The beam has a square cross section of the side 15 cm per 15 cm for span AB and 20 cm for the remaining span. The support P settles by 1 cm. Take the modulus of elasticity E equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton per cm square and it is intended to assess the performance of a beam under the following conditions the first condition is an UVL and uniformly varying load over the span AB and a concentrated force of magnitude 7 kN at point E and a concentrated force of magnitude 10 kN at point C then uh, problem 2 and all uniformly varying load on the span AB a concentrated load of load of 7 kilo e, uh, and a counterclockwise momentum of magnitude 5 kilo 50 kilo uh, newton uh, meter at point C so we have to assess these two loading conditions under uh, these two loading conditions so we have to assess the performance of the beam right okay now go for the preprocessor and go for the element type say add and delete go for the add go for the beam say 2 node 188 say ok and say close right and uh, go for material properties here we are not going to give any real functions we are going to define everything through sections so before that we will go for uh, material models say structure linear elastic isotropic and it is 2b and the poison ratio is 0 right now we'll go for material close now go for sections go for section library beams common sections and the first section is uh, for 15 by 15 15 into 15 uh, say so yeah, ok now we'll go for another one create with the section id 2 you create a breadth of 20, you create a rectangular cross section of breadth 20 by height 20. Say so, okay. So for the span AB, the cross section will be 15 by 15, and after uh, three lines, we will apply the cross section of 20 by 20. This is given in the problem. Right? So go for modeling now, create key points on active coordinate system. Say so, apply. And the point B is at a distance of 6 meters, that is 600 centimeters from A. So I will apply it in this direction. And now on the point C is at uh, 700 meters, say apply. Now it is uh, now D is at 100 centimeters, say apply. And the, the final E point is at 1200 centimeters. 200 centimeters right press ok right so we have created the required key points now we have to create the lines or join the key points to lines go for the lines uh, say straight line select uh, 1 and 2 and again I go for straight line select 2 and 3 then 3 and 4 4 and 5 right press ok so we have created the required lines now what we have to do is we have to mesh it we have to mesh these lines for that uh, what we will do is go for meshing first of all uh, leave the mesh attributes to default and go for the um, size controls and go for manual size say lines and say all lines and give the element edge length as 25 and press ok now what you will do is go for mesh go for lines and you select this line, press OK. So I have measured a single line, right? Then you go for plot, say plot lines, right? And now what, what you have to do is you have to modify the options 
in the measure for that what you will do is go for measure attributes go for default attributes change the section to 2 for otherwise what you will do is just cancel this one say pick the lines and select this three lines and press ok and you change the beam section to 2 because the three lines carries a section of uh, 20 by 20 which is a section id which is with the section id in the specified sections right now what you will do is go for mesh lines select this three lines right just ok right you have measured everything so for that uh, if you want to see the section numbers what you will do is go for the block controls go for uh, this uh, numbering and you see the here are no element attributes you could uh, select uh, section numbers section numbers and you also switch on the line number so on okay so you see the first one is uh, measured with the section number one and the other three lines have been uh, measured with the section number two right now you have to apply a uniformly varying load over this section so in order to make it easier what i will do is first of all i will create a component right for that what i will do with this individual elements inside this only first uh, first uh, a and b uh, first line between a and b right so what i will do is go for select go for comp create component sorry uh, first of all what i have to do is before creating a component i have to to filter out all the entities which I don't want so for that what I will do is go for select the entities and here I will select elements right and uh, I want to uh, select the elements with respect to the attributes and the attributes is section id and I want only the elements with the section id number one so say a plot say ok and say replot once again so you you get the elements with the section id only section id and all other elements have been filled, filtered out so now i will create a component select create component or assembly create component and here i give the name as pressure line pressure line right and this line consists of elements not nodes and press ok so you have created a component then what you have to do is you have to create another component uh, putting all the nodes together that are attached to the key points for that what you will do is select everything and say plot replot then select entities and i want to select nodes now so i will select nodes and say attach to and key points i want to have only nodes that are attached to the previous key points which I have created and say ok now say plot nodes so you see there are only 5 nodes right so now what you have to do is go for component assembly create component once again and we say it's a nodes and this uh, consists of uh, nodes uh, element entity types are nodes and press ok so you created the two components now what you have to do is you have to apply the boundary conditions how to apply the boundary conditions on the nodes for that uh, this uh, go for uh, uh, loads define loads apply structural displacement on nodes and you select this node and press ok and you say all degrees of freedom or otherwise you select ux and ui it is not a problem say ok right and now what you have to do you have to fix this direction fix this one at uh, b also you have to constrain it in the y direction but you have to uh, leave it in the x direction right and then you see uh, select on nodes and uh, this is the b and you see in the problem it has stated that the b has settled by one centimeter right? that means it has yielded to some uh, some distance okay so ui you only fix ui and u minus one because it is in the downward direction 
just okay so we have constraint that one also right and uh, now what i have to do is uh, again select on nodes and we select this point d and this is also only u direction but this should be zero because it has not yielded right so press ok so you have applied the required constraints now we have to apply the forces so go for the force or moment select on nodes and you select this one that is a point c press ok and it is in the fi direction and it is minus uh, 10 e I think uh, the force is uh, uh, 10 e3 because 10 kilo newtons right 10 kilo newtons so 10 e3 plus uh, e3 plus ok now you select on nodes again and you press this point d press ok and give fy yeah and uh, it is minus 7 e3 right and press ok so you apply the forces but one thing is you have to apply the pressure load as well for that we only require this we only require only the line or the elements uh, elements uh, which contain the sanction on id1 for that what i will do is i will filter my selections for that go for select select everything then go for component assembly say select component or assembly right and i want to select it by component name press ok and i want to select only pressure line and pr press ok now go for plot say plot elements right so we get the elements which are with the section id 1 right now what you have to do is i have to apply uniformly varying load which we usually give it to pressure so go for pressure and say on beams and you can select everything right uh, say pick all uh, say pick all rather than selecting like this and you have to change the load key from 1 to 2 because here it is a transfer loading we have to give the load key 2 if it is load key 1 it is in the axial direction so at the node i the load is uh, the load is uh, 10 right and that is 20 right 20 kilo newton per uh, meter so we have converted it and we have given it like this so okay so you see you have applied an uh, load uniformly varying load right now go for select uh, say select everything right and plot we plot right so this is the load case one so what you have to do is you have to save it as a load case one for that uh, go for uh, solution uh, go for load step options right say right load step and uh, give it a number of one say okay so now what happens is in the next case you have to remove this uh, load and you have to put the momentum in anti-clockwise direction which is about uh, 50 kilo newtons which is about 50 kilo newtons sorry it's uh, 150 kilo newtons because 150 kilo newtons right? so what you have to do is now just uh, you have to go for select say component or assembly say pick the component select assembly by component name and i want to select only nodes say ok and say plot nodes right now what i have to do i have to delete this load for that go for preprocessors loads and delete structural displacement not this not displacement this force force on nodes this one press ok right say fy press ok and you have deleted this one right so now uh, to apply a moment go for apply say force or movement on nodes so this one say ok and instead of fy it's mz around the jet so mz it's 150 right it's 150 in newton per meter uh, say ok so you see there is a plus symbol right which shows that it is a counterclockwise direction so then go for select everything 
and go for solution and say first of all replot it and uh, now say write load step file right write write load step file and you say 2 for that and say ok right you say 2 for ok now you have created the two load cases now what you will do is you will solve that you will solve that so go for solve say uh, from load step files give 1 and this is the maximum load step file is 2 say ok and uh, your solution so after solving this problem now we go on to see the solution go for solution and uh, first of all you have to read from the two load sets because there are two load sets you have to read the results from uh, one of the load sets so for that uh, go for uh, this general course person and say read results and uh, say by pick you select the first one and say read and say close here so now you will see the results of uh, the step one right load step one so you go for the list results uh, go for uh, reaction solution press ok and you can see here the reactions as well as uh, the reactions now you have to see the deformation so for that what you have to do is go for the nodal solution go for uh, the DOF solution and go for Y component of displacement press ok right but this is somewhat cumbersome so what you can do is in order to find the maximum Deflection, uh, you can go for the plot results, go for the counter plot, say normal solution, say DOF solution, select Y component of displacement and say OK and here you see this is the maximum amount of the displacement, right? Now I want to see the results for the case number 2, so that what I will do, I again go to the re results, say uh, before uh, that uh, we will uh, plot, uh, okay read results say by pick and select the second one say read and say close now we go for the plot results once again and counter plot normal solution and y component of solution press ok and here you can see this is the maximum uh, displacement right and i want to see the reaction loads in the second case so that i will go for list results go for reaction load and press ok and here i can see the reaction forces reaction uh, forces for so the second one now what i have to do is i have to plot a bending moment diagram shear force diagram as well as a bending moment diagram right um, we haven't read uh, we haven't uh, the results uh, because uh, it's 1.32 they close it is somewhere around one, it should be somewhere around one point nine so uh, yeah, it should be around one point nine and the reaction force is case one is okay and the case two is okay. okay for case one we will see go for read results uh, say I pick uh so maybe say read uh, this one say close now what you do is plot results uh so this results go for reaction solution and press ok you see it's uh five one double five one zero nine six seven seven okay but uh why the value is happening okay now we will uh, plot a shear force uh, diagram, shear force uh, as well as a bending moment diagram for this one. So for that, uh, to specify the element table first, go for the element table, say define table. Uh, I have already defined this table, uh, right? You can just add, uh, say add and you can just uh, give the name here and you select to sequence number and uh, select code SMIC and you put uh, go to the reference uh, element reference and you can see these numbers right and uh, say uh, I press cancel so now uh, I will update it once again and say close now what I will do is uh, go for the plot controls 
go for multi window layout and i will say i, I want the two who are one on the top and one on the bottom and say okay graphic windows now what i will do is i will first erase all these things so for that plot controls erase options plot controls erase options erase screen right now uh, go for plot controls go for windows controls windows on or off and i want to put this window to off so that i can plot the uh, shear force diagram on the window one so for that uh, go for uh, this uh, plot results go for counter plot go for element solution right uh, sorry line element and say sfi and S here sfj left sfj and press ok so you can see this is the shear force diagram of the this is a shear force diagram for the first case then uh, i want to plot the bending movement diagram in the second case so for that what i will do is i will go for windows control say windows on and or off and i will put this second window on and the first window off press ok now uh, what i do will reflect in the second window so line and when table instead of sfi i say bmi and bmj press ok so this is the bending movement diagram this is the bending movement diagram for that right so this is how you can plot the shear force diagram as well as the bending moment diagram for a, uh, a line or for a beam using an ANSYS uh, classic right.